All right, so we finally have the cross tabs for the flash poll that was done by CNN immediately after the debate, and there is a lot of information to glean from these polls. So we're gonna get into the cross tabs, look at them, because there are some numbers that are quite honestly uh, earth moving, to, to, to tell you the truth. And if Kamala Harris is able to take these numbers that we see and actually change them into votes, the Democrats could have a huge, huge night on election day in November. So we're gonna delve into the cross tabs. We're gonna look at those. We're also gonna look at the Ipsos poll that just has a bunch of top lines. We're, we're not gonna get much into it, but we are gonna get into the top lines and see what the trends are there. They're pretty much good for Kamala Harris. Now, before we get into the poll, I just wanna say that I have just turned on memberships for this channel. So if you're interested in being a member and wanna support the channel, please go ahead and do so. I am gonna have members only content, videos where I dig really deep into a lot of the polls and do unedited videos of actually examining the polls. And I'm also gonna be doing live streams for members only. And then when I do some other live streams, have member only comments. So I wanna make it that you actually get something from the membership. There are two memberships. Please, if you're interested in joining, go ahead and join today. And if you're not interested in joining, but you like what you see, you can go ahead and put a super chat. It's greatly appreciated. There's a lot that I would like to accomplish with this channel over the next year or two. I wanna be able to make it so that we can take a lot of these statistics and gather a lot more statistics and bring you a lot more information about the electorate getting ready for the 2026 election midterm. So. Thank you all very much for this little you know, self-indulgence as far as joining, but please go ahead and join if you'd like to get those member benefits. The videos for members only will be starting this weekend. Now, looking at this poll from CNN, we're gonna look at the crosstabs, obviously, but we're gonna look at Donald Trump's number first. And the reason why we're looking at his number first, as you'll see here, his numbers don't change that much pre and post debate. And I think that's because the guy has been running for president for nine years, and we pretty much know about him. Maybe we didn't know about the dog eating stuff, but, but besides that, we pretty much know about him. So let's go ahead and delve just into his favorability rating. And this just shows you right off the bat how there's just absolutely no movement in his numbers. So as you can see before the debate, he had a 39 to 51 favorable, unfavorable rating. And then after the debate, it just really did not move whatsoever. And before the debate, 50% of the people thought he would win. But then at the end, once they watched the debate, they only 37% of the people said that he actually did win. Okay, so I want to just backtrack a little bit. This poll had 39% Republicans, 30% Democrats, and 30% Independents. So this actually is a Republican-leaning poll. And you will see this in the crosstabs because Kamala Harris will be doing a lot worse than what you're seeing in cross tabs in other polls nationwide. So this is a Republican leaning poll and the fact that she actually won the debate against, you know, in this poll, 63 to 37, shows that maybe some in the center right are kind of maybe warming up to Kamala Harris. We don't know, but I'm just wanting to tell you that this is a poll that skews more toward the Republicans. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and look at Kamala Harris's numbers and man, this debate performance helped her out. As you can see, overall, her favorable rating before was 39 to 50. That's very similar to what Donald Trump had, but afterwards, she actually was above water, 45 to 40. So we do see a good six point shift in both of these categories for favorable and unfavorable. So these numbers overall are really, really good. It showed that she won, but she also had more people have a favorable opinion of her and maybe get a little bit of trust in her. Now, let's go into what I see are some of the more important cross tabs when it comes to this poll, because there are some that just really you know, stuck out and, and I wanted to mention them. And the first one are voters 65 and older. So let's go ahead and take a look at that cross tab. Now, if you look at the 65 and older voters going in, they were very much like the population in general. 39% had a favorable rating with Kamala Harris with 50% an unfavorable. But look, after that debate, that is a flip. Wow, 47%, almost 50%, 47% had a favorable rating of her 
and 41% an unfavorable rating. Now remember, seniors are gonna be voters who are gonna be highly likely to turn out. If all of a sudden people are warming up to Kamala Harris, feeling more trust in Kamala Harris, feel that she's gonna do the job and they like her and they have a favorable opinion of her, then this is gonna, I mean, it's not gonna be a momentous shift. There'll still be people who might have a favorable rating of her, but actually vote for Donald Trump, but you only need a few. In, in races where we're talking about percentages, you only need a few, and this is an excellent number. So let's go ahead and go over to the next cross tab. Now in this cross tab, we have independent voters, and before the debate, 30% of them thought favorably of Kamala Harris, where 47% did not. Remember, I said this is a GOP-leaning poll, but these independents, we don't know their ideology. We don't have deeper cross tabs, so just be aware of that. But after the debate, wow, again, we see an 18 point increase in favorability and we see a drop in unfavorability. So amongst independents, we do see this. Now, whether independents matter or not really depends on the state because some states will have very left-leaning independents, others will have more right-leaning independents, and then some will just be right down the middle. Now, in most states, the non-party registered voters or those who are deemed independent usually will trend to the left, slightly to the left. But again, when it usually comes to who turns out on election day, independent voters, many times non-party affiliate voters, just maybe mirror what the eventual composition is of the electorate. We can't glean too much out of this. The only thing I wanted to show was that there was this big shift. Now let's go over to moderate voters. Now, as I mentioned in my other videos, I think there are three groups of people that she needs to target. Hispanic voters, young voters, moderate voters, but I'm gonna take those young voters and take them out and replace them with the senior voters because the senior voters are starting to solidify for the Democrats and for Kamala Harris. If she wins that large group of high turnout voters or at least higher turnout voters, especially compared to the 18 to the 29 crowd, game, set, match, done. So let's go ahead and go over to moderate voters and see what they're doing. As you can see in this case, her favorability rating amongst moderates was even lower here, 38%, and her unfavorable rating was 43%. But after the debate, boom, huge shift, 10% shift, 48% favorable, and 37% unfavorable, very, very much above water. So you're seeing her not just make these shifts where she just gets above water, you see her underwater quite significantly, and then you see her, you know, her head above water quite significantly. So we're not talking about some small little changes when it comes to favorable and unfavorability ratings. We're talking about pretty significant and substantial changes. So if you see male voters, 35% before the debate and 52% unfavorable before the debate, but after the debate, that obviously she's still down and she's still underwater, but you are talking about an 8% favorability swing in her favor. That is huge. When If we're talking about an election with just winning it on the margins, these are those margins. These are where, where uh, th these margins will be made up. And as you can see, our unfavorability rating went down a little bit, in, in her unfavorability rating went down, not as much as her favorability rating went up. So this shows that maybe some more independent, undecided voters who didn't know who they were going for, who were male, they're now shifting towards Kamala Harris. So let's look at the female vote. Now amongst women, this really gives you an idea of how right-leaning this poll is because in almost every poll that we see amongst women voters, that number before the debate would be flipped and usually would be significantly over 50%. But in this one, you can see 42 to 48, favorable to unfavorable before, but then the numbers, I mean, the numbers just essentially flip 47 to 42. So she's above water, but that number seems a little bit low for women voters, but still, uh, it is a flip nonetheless. Now, when we talk about the debate performance itself and how it actually impacted people, like the shifts that were happening. So how many people sat there and said, okay, I'm a Trump or Harris supporter, but after watching that debate, I'm switching. Well, let's first look at the Harris supporters and then let's look at the Trump supporters. And when I mean Harris supporters, I mean they were Harris supporters before the debate and then maybe they had a change. 
Now, looking at the Kamala Harris group, only 2% of Kamala Harris supporters now are going to change to Trump due to that debate performance. Now, remember, if the electorate is essentially 50-50, right, this is about a 1% change. Now, of those considering but still support Harris, 10%. So overall, 12% of her electorate is maybe either moving or shifting in some way or whatever. So that means that 88% are still sticking with her. Now, if we look at Donald Trump, it's a little bit different because it's, it's not 12%, it's 23%. And as a matter of fact, that 6% changing to Harris. Now, let's, let's go back to what I was just saying a second ago, which is that you know, if the, if the electorate is essentially 50-50, you can take this percentage, cut it in half, and this could be how it impacts the electorate. This could be a 3% swing against Donald Trump. If 6% of his voters have now all of a sudden gone to Kamala Harris, that's a 3% shift. Okay, and we're, again, we're talking about a Republican-leaning poll. But you still have 17% of people who say they are considering changing, but they're still supporting Trump. These are huge numbers. These are kind of like red, red flag, you, you know, alarms going off. You got to be worried about that debate performance. Hence the reason why Kamala Harris wants another debate performance or another debate after this one because it could bleed more voters. But this number here, so so you got to look at it. If Kamala Harris bled 1% and Donald Trump bled 3%, that's a 2% gain. And when we're talking about very, very close margins, that 2% matters. And really in the post-debate uh, polls, we are seeing those about 2%. Morning Council had a poll we are seeing those 2% changes. So this is actually quite interesting. Now, there are some questions that I think are very, very important. They didn't ask some, which I would have liked, like who do you think the better leader is and stuff like that. They didn't really ask a lot of those, uh, but there was one that they had, and it's right here, understanding problems facing people like you. So they asked all of the voters, do you think that Kamala Harris or Donald Trump is better. And they just, they didn't, they didn't look at them individually. They just kind of had them in a matchup here, right? So before the debate, Kamala Harris had 39% of people thinking that they, you know, she supports people like them or understands their problems. And with Donald Trump at 43%. After the debate, that number flips. Now Kamala Harris is at 44% and Donald Trump at 40 so this was, I think, this is, this is part of what we're going to see in a second here, which can be the earth-shattering number. This number right here shows people, you know, Kamala Harris cares for you. Kamala Harris wants to help you. Kamala Harris is there to uh, improve your life. She went up, he went down. Let's go to the next crosstab, because honestly, if this crosstab changes the election changes drastically. If this next cross tab changes, we aren't talking about a close election. We're talking about a blowout. And I mean, I guess it, not 1984, 1964, 1972 blowout. I think we're out of those days. But are we talking about 2008? Maybe. I mean, I don't think Kamala Harris is going to pick up Indiana, but you know, we're talking about all those states North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada. Uh, we're talking about Pennsylvania. We're talking about all of them going blue. So let's go look at the next cross tab that just blew my mind when I saw it. Now it's that same cross tab I talked about before, but it's of voters who make under $50,000 a year. Let's look at this. So if you look at before the debate, only 36% of Americans or registered voters in this poll thought that Kamala Harris was best to understand the problems of people with Donald Trump being 43%. That number flipped and actually expanded a little. But Kamala Harris now being at 46% and Donald Trump at 34%. This can change everything because Donald Trump relies a lot on lower income voters. And if all of a sudden this debate made it, that they're noticing that there is this change and they're saying, hmm, I like what Kamala Harris says. This can be 
earth shattering. This can be earth moving. This can change the, you know, everything in the election. The question is, can they make this become votes? This is the problem that Democrats have, and they always have. They can start all of a sudden winning these metrics, but then at the end of the day, these people don't vote, or they still vote for Donald Trump because he's going out there talking about how people are eating dogs and cats and pets, right? So in this poll, I mean, this number right here, the Democrats now have the advantage. Look at what you did in debate. Take those ideas, run with them, because if all of a sudden you're bringing down margins in places where incomes are $50,000 and lower, you are taking a huge chunk out of Donald Trump's, out of Donald Trump's votes. A huge chunk. This can be earth shattering for the Democrats. Hopefully they can change it into votes. We'll see, but hopefully that's the case. All right, so let's look at the Ipsos poll real quick. So we have the first question, made me more hopeful about the future. And we're only gonna look at registered voters. I don't care about the total number of adults. If you're not a registered voter, you can't vote in this election anyways, unless you go register and the chances of you doing that are probably highly unlikely. Anyway, Kamala Harris, 45% of registered voters about having more hope in the future. Now, if we look at gave the impression of having higher moral integrity, Kamala Harris at 50% with Donald Trump at 29. That's pretty, pretty bad for Trump. Now, the next question seemed like someone who would listen to me and understand my concerns. Again, and we mentioned this in the CNN poll earlier, Kamala Harris dominating that group. Independents dominating that group as well. Very, very strong for Kamala Harris. And another thing too in this that I think is really interesting when they say seem like would listen to me and understand my concern, 22% of Republicans say none. I, I don't think either one of them would do. That's a cop-out because they don't want to say Kamala Harris, they're a Republican, okay? So they just like saying, oh, I don't think either one of them would. That is a pure cop-out because like if you look at Democrats, it's only 9%, right? So uh, that's starting to show a little bit of a chink in the armor for, for the Republicans, maybe. Let's keep going. Seem more like someone I would want to have a casual conversation with. Again, Kamala Harris, 46% to 31. And again, Republicans, 24% of them are just like, no, I don't want to talk to either one of them. Whereas only 9% of Democrats, right? Again, this, some Republicans there, and definitely independents, you had 28% of independents, even though Kamala Harris won these group of voters. You have a lot of people on the Republican side going, oh, I don't want to talk about Donald Trump, right? That's, that's good for the Democrats. Okay, here's the one, next one. Who's the candidate that appeared more dignified? 53% for Kamala Harris to 26% for Donald Trump. Okay, so now we found one where Donald Trump actually is in the lead, right? Stumbled and didn't appear sharp. Donald Trump, 49%. Kamala Harris, 22%. Okay, and it'll be interesting, like, of Republicans. Yeah, only 41% said, um, said Kamala Harris was stumbling and all that. There's your cop-out of 38% because they knew he lost. Uh, only 6% only Democrats said Kamala Harris. And only 16% of independents said so. So I guess that shows you who they thought the stumbling moron who was talking about eating dogs was. Now, who won the debate here? Registered voters, 50% for Kamala Harris and 24% for Donald Trump. And this goes with the CNN poll that it was two to one. I mean, the CNN poll was basically two to one. This, when you take out none and skipped, is two to one. Democrats overwhelmingly thought that Kamala Harris won, but only 53% of Republicans thought that he won. And now this, this comes to a bigger question, which is, will there be a segment of the Republicans that all of a sudden just say, I'm not gonna vote this election. I really don't care who wins. Because see, that's where the Democrats were a few months ago. I don't care who wins. That Republicans might be falling into that trap now. If all of a sudden you're looking at 31% saying, ah, neither one of them won, when there was a clear winner, okay, you might have a lot of Republicans staying home on election day that just don't care. They're like, wow, I watched that guy. This is the first time I've really watched him. He's talking about eating dogs and bacon and stuff like that. I, I don't, I, I, I can't, I can't go out and vote for him. Now, this one's a very interesting one. Which of the following describes your opinion, even if neither is exactly right? 
Trump's verbal attacks on Harris made me 57% of people saying less likely to vote for Trump. Now, of course, the Democrats are always going to say that, but if you look at independents, 59% say they're less likely to vote for Trump because of his tax. 21% of Republicans say that they're less likely to vote for Donald Trump because of his attacks on Kamala Harris. Now, if we look at the same thing when it comes to Kamala Harris on Donald Trump, we see that it pretty much goes the way it is. Democrats are, are um, still less likely to vote for Trump. Republicans are less likely to vote for Harris. And this was 50-50, and it probably is a split based on leaners. Um, this, this is exactly where it is. So this shows that Kamala Harris attacking Donald Trump really didn't have an impact at all. Um, but, Com but Donald Trump attacking Kamala Harris did have an impact. But again, the whole idea with this debate was just kind of throw the bait at him, let him destroy himself. Like she didn't even have to do anything. She just let him destroy himself. All right. So that's all for today. To me, these polls show a momentous shift to the Democrats. Now the question is, does this sustain? Does this keep going? Uh, when Kamala Harris became the nominee, she got a bump. That bump kept going. Uh, the convention bump, which was only a tiny bit, it still kind of kept going. And since this debate, we have seen two polls, this Ipsos one. We also saw a poll from Morning Council, which now put the election outside, as far as the popular vote at the national level, outside the margin of error. It is now a five-point lead and is actually the biggest divergence between the two candidates since Kamala Harris was in the race in the morning council poll. So we need to see if this sustains, but there are so many opportunities for the Democrats right now to solidify this thing, to, to just bring it home, okay? And there's 50-some days left. They need to just bring it home. They, they have everything they need. It would be great if they could have another debate and just take a little bit of a piece out of them. But, you know, um, John Lovett from uh, Pod Save America did make a point. I think it was Lovett or, or one of the other ones. Maybe it was John Favreau. I'm not sure. But they basically said, you know, maybe just go ahead, have the one debate. You're on top. Just go out while you're ahead. That's possibly a good strategy too. All right. I just wanted to go over these cross tabs. Have a wonderful day wherever it is you are. Please join the channel if you enjoyed it. Go ahead and subscribe as well. And thank you all very much. Have a wonderful day wherever it is you are. Bye-bye.